Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I'm here today to do, we're going to call it my September wrap up. Although I don't know if I read all of these in September, I might have some stragglers from August, but we're going to go with that. I'm trying to get back into the habit of doing my wrap up videos and just adding a little bit more content to my channel. Um, now that we have A gotten through the move and B gotten through like a busy summer, I'm getting back into some routines. So hopefully there'll be a little bit more content on my channel lately. And of course now the sun's gonna come out and throw my lighting all off, but whatever. It's a very classic rainy fall day today. I actually got caught out in the rain when I was um, out for my walk run-ish thing. Whatever you call it. I can't call myself a runner because like I can't go and just run three miles and not have to stop. I run for probably about half a mile three quarters and then I walk for a couple for a little bit and then I run for the next little bit but I don't know does that count as a runner I work out how about we go with that so um here are some books I've read in the past month ish oh no it's better three months after I received it hmm I have to look into that one Okay, so the first book I have f to tell you about, because I don't, these are just in a pile, I don't remember what order I read them in, but is Sea Biscuit by Laura Hillenbrand. She also wrote the book Unbroken, that is the story of Louis Zamperini. Um, so obviously this follows the story of Sea Biscuit, and so I listened to this on audio. I really enjoyed listening to Unbroken on audio as well. Um, very interesting. Like I didn't realize how intense horse racing is, which I guess it should be. I I. I just didn't know. I, I learned a lot, a lot about a lot of the risks they take with these animals as well as the jockeys and all the, just what goes into it. So really interesting read. Made me appreciate what Seabiscuit was able to do even more because it was, I mean, this is not something that happens a lot is you come upon a horse, not only a horse that's like this, but a trainer that's able to train it like that with all of the pressures and all of the press and then having the right jockey, it's just, it's crazy. Um, but it was fantastic. So I really, really enjoyed Seabiscuit. The other book I picked up, again, not in any order because I just finished this not too long ago, is The Secret Wife by Gil Paul. Um, this has dual time perspectives, so it's 1914 and 2016. Um, Kitty Fisher lives in present day and she inherits her great grandfather's cabin um, and kind of goes there as a retreat because she needed to just some stuff happened with her husband she needed to get away um, so when she's there kind of fixing up the place she learns a little bit more about her grandfather and his Russian heritage so you're you're discovering things with Kitty in present day and then you go back in time to 1914 and you meet um, her grandfather Dimitri um, and Dimitri ends up falling in love with the Grand Duchess Tatiana Romanov of the Romanovs. So A, I love that Russian history side of things. I love the twist to that story. I love the present day exploration of it. I really like the book. There were times where it got a little, a little slow, but overall I would say four stars. It was still a very, very good book. The other book I picked up I'm finding all kinds of stuff in my books. I really should clean them out before I put them in a pile. <laughs> the other book I have is Refugee by Ellen Gratz. I'm putting this on my daughter's shelf. Um, this is a YA book that follows three children in three different periods of time. So we have um, the 1930s, 1990s, and then 2015. All three of them are escaping their war-torn country that they lived in. So Joseph is a Jewish boy living in Nazi Germany. Isabel is a Cuban girl. Um, in the 90s, there was a lot of riots and unrests and stuff with Fidel Castro and what was happening there. And then Mahmoud is a Syrian boy in 2015 when Syria, of course, is, I think it was a civil war. So you follow them and their flight from their home and their journey to leave and find someplace better to live. And, oh very humbling, very interesting. The connections, not connections, but the similarities that all three go through, even though there's such a time difference. 
the they feel the same fears they um, kind of face very similar challenges it's just very interesting so I really suggest this book it was fantastic um, the next one I don't remember if I talked about yet because it's been a while since I did a wrap-up um, but it's Us Against You by Frederick Bachman this is the second book to Beartown um, so I can't tell you a ton of what happens in this one, but Beartown basically follows a small town. You think it's in Canada, but it's not. Um, and there, that whole town re revolves around hockey and kind of the up and coming kids that are in hockey and their team. And they put a lot of pressure on the players of the team and, um, there's a rape that happens between a very popular player and a girl who has significant connections. And it is one of the best books I've ever read. It makes you really think, which you wouldn't think a book about hockey would make you think so much, but it really makes you think, and this is a continuation of it, that makes you think just as much. I wish I would put me on like little pull, I don't know, little tabs out of it because you should see how many corners I have. I know, I, I turned corners, you guys. That's how much I wanted to remember certain things um, in here. And just how does Frederick Bachman create such, there was such an ominous atmosphere this whole entire time. Like I could feel, I could feel this like build up to something. And it wasn't in the words. I mean, it, it was because I was reading it, but I don't know how he built this. He just made me feel it like so deep. And then all of his just little lines that he has all the time. Um, he is like a master at them. I wish I could find one. I need to actually go through with like a highlighter and highlight them. Because um, there's just, they're fantastic. And I mean, it's right from the start. Here we go. Um, when politics work in our favor, we call it cooperation. But when it favors others, we call it corruption. There's a lot of politics in here. So keep that in mind. Um, oh, this one was good. People will always choose a simple lie over a complicated truth because the lie has one unbeatable advantage. The truth always has to stick to what actually happened, whereas the lie just has to be easy to believe. It's fabulous. You need to pick up both of those books. Like, go do it right now. It's so good. Um, and then we get to kind of what I've just recently finished. I finished That Night by Chevy Stevens. Oh, so good. So it follows Tony, and I feel like I'm talking about this book a lot lately, but it follows Tony, um, who is just released from prison, and she went to prison because she was convicted of killing her sister. Dual timelines. You go through it. You learn some things. It's fantastic. The other book I just finished last night was The Last Book Party by Karen Duckus. Don't pick up this book. Such a disappointment. I mean, it was only 200 pages. I didn't even get interested into the book till about 130 pages into it. And then um, my main character, Eve, this is 1987. She's wanting to be this writer. So she's working at a publishing house, I think. Isn't really fulfilled with that job, so she goes and becomes an assistant for this writer up in the Cape. Um, I mean, the map is beautiful, but she makes stupid choices. I could not relate to her whatsoever. So maybe it's that, maybe I just can't relate to the character, but I don't know if it's supposed to be this wonderful literary thing, but I would go pages without anything happening. And like literally the last 10 pages I skimmed because nothing happened. And maybe that makes, I don't know, I don't know. I need a story, I need things to happen. I'm not there for, I mean, I want something beautifully written, but I also need something to happen. I'm not, a, I don't know, it just wasn't for me, I'm sorry. And then the one I'm currently in the middle of is My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. This follows a girl named Turtle. She's 14. She lives in Northern California. She lives with her dad and her grandpa, and she's got a pretty shitty life. Let's just leave it at that. Um, 
So she tends to go out into the woods along the coast to kind of escape what's happening at home um, where she meets a boy. And that's kind of where I am now. Um, I know that she gets a little struggle between how she's been taught and what goes on with him and she's got this crappy home life. I don't know. I'm just, I'm in love with Turtle already. I want to bring her home and have her live here with me and I want to take care of her. <laughs> but I'm listening to it on audio um, and kind of keeping up with it as well uh, in the physical book, but I'm really, really, really enjoying this. Um, it is written beautifully, so it's not like, not like I can't appreciate beautifully written books, but things are happening in it, whereas Nothing happened in the bed. They went to a party. So anyways, those are the books I read in September-ish. Um, what are some good books that you read in September? Comment below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.